Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to the permission statement. <clears throat> I want to mess with the lighting a little bit. I know it's not quite the ideal circumstance, but I'm going to bring the lighting down and the tone down to tell a story about Mariana Bravo, a friend of mine that was uh, unfortunately taken from us <clears throat> not too long ago. She... Um, she was brutally murdered, unfortunately, in, in Tijuana. And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to tell her story because it intertwines into this narrative that I've been telling y'all. And I've been forgetting to do this from the beginning. I declare under penalty of perjury that what I say is true. Now, if I give the wrong word, like I say bigamy or I say adultery when I mean bigamy or vice versa, hopefully you can understand that I know the difference and I'll go back and make the corrections. And i seen a friend of mine, he actually uh, edits the videos and puts, them, puts it up there, the corrections. And I've seen other folks do that. I'll get to that point. I'm new. Uh, I'm learning. This is a learning process for me. <clears throat> but I should have been starting off these videos with I declare under penalty of perjury because uh, it's important to say that so that you're reinforcing what you're saying with some kind of potential consequence if you're not being truthful because some people will uh, embellish or they'll omit or whatever. I'm telling you like the full details. I'm not throwing extras on it or nothing. And as hard as that may be to fathom, uh, I'm not exaggerating at all. Like some of the people even on here have been there part of this crazy journey. So when I talk about Amsterdam, Germany, the army, Kosovo, Tijuana, the Arianos, like all this crazy ass stuff across the country. Um, that it, it's not to brag. I'm not to. Uh, I'm not here to uh, glorify mistakes or bad negative choices. I'm here to say I, I got tired of everything, and I was able to learn by other people's mistakes. And we have to get to that point in life where we don't have to suffer to learn a lesson. We should be able to observe the mistakes of people that we love or that we know and not go down that path, whether we're doing it to honor them or just to not go through whatever it is they go through. But sometimes we don't always get the message. So <clears throat> it's important that we get those memos whether they're coming from the universe, a higher power, wherever the source is, for you, it's important that you actually learn from it and implement that learning into your decision-making process. And that's what I'm trying to show folks is all these people along the way, they have plenty of life experience to draw from, from their own path, the forks and the roads where they made those choices, or people close to them, like real close, um, that they could have taken and learned with. Did we have to do that? And I'm terrified, and I have no problem in saying that. I'm mortal, mortified that that could be passed down to my son. We have to, as a village, work together to make sure that we don't hand that stuff down to our child. I drive for a lot of wealthy people. They're well to do, and I and, it, and I'm, that's not to say that some don't have some of the same problems that people come from, coming from the maybe what some people will call underprivileged or even middle class. They have their own problems, but they put a lot of energy into preparing their children for success, and they go they go through a lot. And so observing that and the importance that they see and understand that they have to give them is many tools as they can to succeed um <clears throat> so that being said let me talk to you about mariana bravo uh, i met mariana bravo i think about 2004 there's a good guy on um social media his name is jay gameway and he has a boxing uh commentary called hot boxing minute and he um he runs that platform i met mariana through him like I said, I used to hang out with this group called the Icons. They were a, 
uh, it, it was needles, cans, mics, and linoleum. You know, needles for DJ, uh, cans, graffiti, mics, MCs, and linoleum for breakdancers, right? Because San Diego was hip hop. It was um, party crews, rebels, uh, Navy. You got Navy SEALs over there. You got the Navy, just, you know, regular, you know, seamen, uh, submariners. Marines, you got MCRD, you got a, so you have a boot camp there. You have, you know, NAS. You have Miramar, so you have a plethora of of military folks right there, and you have all these colleges. So people are coming from all over the country, and you're hugged up against the international border. And a lot of people are heading down into Mexico to go to Ensenada, to Rosarito, Tijuana, the Revolution, man, the Red Guy Revolution was where all the clubs were. And you only had to be 18 to drink. So people were going down there and partying at a young age. That's what it was. You know, and it was a lot. Papas and beer, tequila sunrise, you know, club excess. Um, gosh, <laughs> baby rocks. You know, there was, there was so many. Like they, uh, the jump off, you know, papas and beer down there in Rosarito. Uh, everybody was going down there. And it was just, it was a crazy experience. But you also had the raves, underground raves, house parties. Like I said, you had party crews, rebels, uh, graffiti artists, uh, gangsters, uh, all kinds of people. Man, they'd all come together. There was the awesome weather. And so it, people would come to San Diego and they didn't want to stay. And I'll tell you about a group that kind of we all bonded together through the icons so the icons was part of a multiple group there was icons were individual but they were part of the armada you know mad joker and there was a whole bunch of other hip-hop mcs and it was multicultural like there was filipinos mexicans blacks whites everybody everybody was welcome it was open to so many folks and uh you got to meet so many people from many different walks of life and um mariana was part of that you know and she was with Jay Gameway and he was from the Icons. Um, and right there on the seven block, 735 Evans Street, there was two houses. They were owned by Echo Sketch's grandma. And Mariana was staying there off and on with Jay. I think she might have, when I first met her, I, I met her at that house right there. And um, that's when I had just came home from Texas. So at 735, Evan Street, that's where all that stuff went down with Tony and Lorena and and introducing them to the icons. And there was all this wild, crazy stuff going down. Um, not, not in a bad way, but it was just like two worlds meeting each other. And, and it's like, it, it was it was, it was was interesting. And so Mariana came after that. And when I was coming back from Texas by way of Amsterdam, um, that's when I met her. And she was young. She's um, she's a friend of uh, my spouse that I'm in this disillusioned marriage with. But I think I'm, I'm sure I met her before she, that they met and started hanging out. They both grew up in Southeast San Diego. There was a, a group of young ladies, like the sisters of some of our friends. And they were part of Jessica and Jessica. And there was, you know, Mariana. And there was all these girls that were, uh, they were, they were, they were always there too with the group and with the icons. They were family. And um Mariana at first I didn't know that she had such a uh, a hard time with alcohol. You know, I knew no I didn't know no better. And eventually we had all moved into a house in North Park from there. So it was myself, it was Ray, it was uh Sean, Sean Young probably on here down in Belize. Uh, Ray's up in uh, Riverside or Marina, somewhere in San Bernardino. Jay Gameway, him and him and Mariana. Uh, Jay's uh, down there in San Diego doing Hot Boxing Minute and working as a uh, was he a chemical engineer, microbiology, DNA um, sequencing, something to that effect. Uh, Etcho Sketch has passed on. Uh, unfortunately, shout out to rest in, rest in peace to Etcho Sketch. And who else was living there at the house? Stroke was living there, uh, and myself. And we all worked with a gentleman named Jeremiah Jepson. Now, Jeremiah Jepson was the introduction of another group of people. So there was these 
children of CEOs of like Caterpillar and DuPont and all these different companies, they grew up in Indonesia and all over the world. These CEOs and upper echelon executives, they would be sent to these other countries to handle business on behalf of these companies and they would be able to bring their children and they were able to go to these really, you know, well, good schools. And so they bonded together and then they ended up in San Diego and, um, Charles, Charles William, AKA Mantis, the Muay Thai fighter. Um, he worked at 7-Eleven with James Gameway and then a bond was made, Jeremiah Jepson. And so then we all kind of clicked together. So Jeremiah Jepson, uh, worked for a company called Total Window and Door Installation out of Washington. So he got us all a job there and we were doing window and door installation. And Mariana at the time was, I can't remember if she was going to school or working for cell phone company or whatever it was, but she had a job too. So we would take off, she'd make breakfast, we would rotate making breakfast, we'd go to work, we'd come home, we'd take turns making making dinner. Uh, Sean would do Belizean dishes sometimes, Jeff would do the Filipino, like like real deal uh, Filipino, you know, pan set, pan de sal, like a chicken adobo. Uh, we would all rotate, we were, we were a family there. And Mariana was part of that family. They would go out together as a group. Mariana would come. And that's when I started seeing more of the alcohol problems. I go do my thing. But I would show up and there would be problems where they would say that Mariana got a little bit too much. And she started acting up. And um, eventually over time that became more of a, a, a reoccurring problem. And... Uh, she she push it to the throttle all the way up every time, and then she would become hard to deal with. And it's like people want to go out and have fun, but they would bring her along. She'd get to a certain point, it would kind of be like, oh man, come on. So, um, the house after over time we went all went different ways, uh, and eventually there was a, a break between Jeffrey and Mariana. I won't say what it was about. Uh, not my, not my, um, no, actually, because they carry it on over to 26 and Imperial. Stop me there. So we moved from uh, North Park and then they moved to 26 and Imperial to a loft residence up on top. That's right. And then she was still with Jay over there. And so they stayed together even after that. Cause that's right. There was the incident on 26 and Imperial after the Super Bowl. Well, like I said, we, we still cook together, eat together, embark on journeys together. But there was the ongoing problem with the heavy drinking, right? And um, eventually, like I said, something happened between her and him, and they split ways. And I didn't see much too much of her as much after that. Um, and then in 2011, when I bumped into... I was in Sonoma, and I bumped into my now spouse. <sighs> I was in Sonoma. She was in San Diego. And like I said, she was engaged in a, how you say, she was messing with my friend, right? Marvin Mace is in jail doing time for the crimes that they committed. She was doing a PC-1000 because she had to and be, for the DUIs and the, and the crimes that they were arrested for in order to try to get that absolved because that's what a PC-1000 is. You plead guilty. Uh, you're given a certain amount of time to complete this. If you do, then then they, they act accordingly. Uh, so she was taking care of that, trying to go through all the uh, issues with her son, David. And uh, she couldn't move up north. But when we met, it was based on a misunderstanding. But then we started striking up a conversation. Like I said, she says that, you know, she, it wasn't nothing that serious with my friend. I know he was... They were smashing because he would tell me about it. Um, and then, like I said, she had some medical issues at the time. And she, and, and she explained it as such as, you know, whether it was just him or was it other dudes. I, you know, the, you know the, the cause we agreed on was definitely, you know, unprotected, whatever. And... Uh, so I knew they were smashing. You know what I mean? He said it. You know, sometimes a dude will say it, but a girl won't. But he was giving great detail. So I knew. Um, but like I said, he was living at home with his mom and dad. Asking her to go drop him off on the freeway so he could go tag. Had, I think, two daughters. Didn't have no job. Wasn't really doing for nothing. Didn't have his own place. 
And, um, you know, whether she was just looking out for herself or whatever, we I, I really took a liking to her. And uh, she would work all day and then drive all the way to Sonoma to see me, you know. And it, and it really pulled up my heartstrings. So it, I decided... I, I decided to move to San Diego because she couldn't move to Sonoma. Um, but Mariana was an important person in facilitating this because I knew that Mariana knew her and she knew that Mariana knew me. And so Mariana was an advocate for both of us on that, you know, that like, hey, she's cool. You're cool. You know, don't do it no harm by her. Hey, he's cool. He's a little bit crazy. Not in a bad way, in a good way. Um, but, um, Cause I, I, like I said, I don't fuck around, man. It is, it is what it is. Um, it, it's a lot, a lot different now, but back then she was going off of what she knew of me before. And I'll get to that later about what happened the last time I seen her. Um, but, uh, so she advocated for us. So our relationship started, I moved to San Diego and then Mariana kind of was just like out. I didn't see her much, but I would. I know that she got stuck down in Mexico and that she was down there a lot and she had moved in with my friend C's and C's was doing his best to help her out, look out. C's was solid. C's was always like, hey, trying to give her like some flecha, some, some, hey, you, what you're doing is you're, you're pressing the needle out there. You're hitting that throttle a little bit. Taking a lot of risks that are unnecessary and it's just a lot of it had to do with the drinking and, and um, yeah, she was doing some stuff, you know, like, yeah, she was she was doing things that could lead to her getting harmed. And he kept trying to tell her, you know, I care about you. I'm your friend. Don't do this. They had arguments and everything. And I know she was going through something with her family. So she would tell me, like, she would write to me, you know, on, on Facebook and say, why am I so alone? You know, she was lonely, man. She was alone. Even though she had all these friends and drinking partners and they were like, oh, yeah, girl, this, you know, she was lonely. She wanted a companion. She was always having hardship you know she had jay she had jeff and jeff loved her and cared about her but you know she kind of did them dirt and um that was the end of that and he had put up with a lot of stuff and and tried to make it work and so from what i'm told she uh delved into other substances which was kind of shocking for me because she had very low opinion of people who were involved with meth, you know, and, and her thing was always alcohol, heavy drinking alcohol, as is all her friends. That's the squad of like, bam, like, I'm talking like drinking like a, a, a truck driver and a sailor and a Marine's DNA put together, drinking like that, you know. Um, and so I didn't see her for a good while, but sometimes she reached out to me one time, like, Hey, I need some money. Can you send me like 20 bucks and I'll pay you back? Blah, blah, blah. And I was, and I was yeah, sure. And she's, she was going to sell us some shrimp and everything. And, and we talked about going to Belize and so we ended up going, but she didn't go. But, um, you know, you could tell her life was kind of like, you know, un, um, unstable. And I want to say 2021, we went on vacation and we were going to go, it was uh, my friend's daughter's birthday. Uh, so his wife said, hey, I'm going with uh, my husband's sisters and, and, and my money bell for her birthday. Why don't you and Jessica and Michael and everybody come down and, and we all go to Universal Studios. So I hit up my friend Joe and Gabriel and everybody. It was like, I invited all my family type people. That's who I like to roll with, family type people that are dedicated to their families. And we all met up at Universal Studios. We didn't see Monty Bell and Angie, but but in or the sisters, because I guess they kind of do their own thing. Which is, but we got to go to Universal Studios. But we went to San Diego first, and I was over on the seven block, and I was at my friend Donnell's house, who is Etch's his cousin, and um, he said, "Hey, look who's here!" And I turned around. And it was that kind of moment where it's like, oh, hey, you don't really recognize the person, but you don't want to be a jerk. And it was a shave. I thought it was a dude. And um, and she, and she looked at me. She goes, it's me, Mariana. And and I was so shocked that all I could do was I just put my arms around her and hugged her and held her, man. Like, like what is going on in your life? Um, and that's when she laid it all on me that she was like, yo, uh, hey, I've been down to Mexico and. They kidnapped my boyfriend, 
and I'm pretty sure he might be dead. They've been there's these people down there that I pissed off and blah blah blah. And I was like, oh shit, she's on drugs and drunk or something. But I knew that she wasn't like like completely off 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 target, you know. She started showing me text messages and then she even showed me a picture of a dead body and she's like, That tattoo, I recognize that as my boyfriend's and um you know, she had some proof, although some of the things she was saying was a slightly far-fetched, you know. And she was like, yo, I need you to come with me down into TJ and go after these people. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I'm on vacation with my family, man. Are you serious? I'm on vacation. With my, I'm a family man. Uh, I'm on vacation with my family. We're going to Universal Studios, man. And, um... I don't do that. I don't get down like that no more, you know? And um, But that's what she expected. She expected the old me. And there was a circumstance that happened that, you know, if she needed my help, like, to go, if somebody was going to do her harm, no doubt. You know, and there was a circumstance that happened that I always felt bad about, you know, um, that it's like, no doubt, yeah, for sure, man, if, if, some, if someone was going to hurt her. But she wasn't in danger of that. She wanted to go down there, like, because he's the, her boyfriend. And I, I'm like, hey, you're safe right here. Stay away from down there. But she was showing me the messages going back and forth. These people, like I said. So there was some significance, you know, there was definitely some truth to whatever story was being told. And then Caesar showed up. And Caesar was telling me the real. Caesar, Caesar knows what's up he was like mariana he was trying to tell her straight like hey mariana come on you know because she was saying like ah i'm nobody's gonna touch me because my family and yada 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 and she was trying to give her a reality check it's like hey down there everybody knows somebody so if you piss off the wrong person you can't think that you won't get touched just because you know somebody because some people don't know that person or they don't care and they may know some people too. It ain't put. It ain't like that in TJ. Ain't nobody can be sitting there walking around like they're invincible. And unfortunately, she had that mindset, and he had the reminder of something that had already happened um, with a previous boyfriend. You know, understandably. So he was trying to give her the real, and I was like, "Hey, you know what? Come to Napa with us." I, I could tell she was going through some. And when, when people are going through that. And you open up your door, that's a huge burden because they bring all that drama and that stress and that chaos. But I could tell she needed to be far away from where she could access whatever it was that was causing her all these problems, right? And these people. And um, the lack of friends other than Caesar and Johnny Blaze and probably, um, probably Sir, and those are all good friends, right? Um, but a lot of people kind of were just like, oh, you know, Mariana keeps doing the thing over again. And I, and I understand that, right? But when you're willing to open up your door and bring somebody, that's a huge undertaking, man. And it doesn't always work. Sometimes it costs you that friendship. Been there, done that, right? But I said, hey, well, don't make me take you out of here uh, and take you up north, you know? And she would just, she really wanted me to go down to TJ and go to war on her behalf with these people for her boyfriend and everything. And I'm like, no, no. No, um, so, so she disappeared that night. She went over to uh, down the street, and then we didn't see her again. And then you know we went on vacation. We continued on. She wasn't supposed to go down to Mexico, from what I'm told. She didn't. She went to like a little rehab. Then she left, and then she bounced down there into TJ. And when she went down there, she ended up going to exactly or roughly around where these problems had, had taken place. And the people that she had aggravated or some other people for some other circumstances, they did her dirt, man. They repeatedly raped her and stabbed her and lit her on fire. And, and this is a little tiny thing, man. I'm not joking. She's like 5'1", five 5'2", five little tiny thing, 100-something pounds. And... um. You know, so I always think about the people that I knew that got killed in Mexico. Just the, the ones that got set in a trap. And it's just their last moments where they realize, you know, that you look, they're looking for a way out. And there is no way out. And they're wishing that there's a, a way out, you know, whether talking it out or buying a way out. But there has to be a moment, unfortunately, where they realize, damn, this is it. And, um... That has to be a horrible feeling to be in another country, you know, away from people you love and knowing that nobody's going to know or, you know, I mean, it's just there's got to be a million things racing through their mind. Survival being the first. Right. 
And um, it just didn't have to happen that way. And um, that experience shook up my spouse. But I kept telling her about all the other people that I knew that suffered that. And the people that I got into conflict as a result of that. Because, after, you know, I, I never thought it was cool, man. That's why I kind of, like, looked at people in a different light. That, that glorify that kind of chaos and stuff. I, so a lot of people think just because they do a few bumps of cocaine or they listen to some corridos or they do this or that, that they're like, ah, I'm part of that life. But whoo, there's a, there's a, there's a, a heavy toll to pay to really go out there and get involved in that for those people, you know? And, and just, I don't know, if you don't see something foul about the things that gets done and how they do it and you like that stuff, that's... They're, you know, to each their own. But um, I kept telling her, like, I've lost a lot of people. I have no desire to go to Tijuana. <laughs> I don't want to go. You know, I mean, you can have TJ. Back in the days, it was like, oh, should I go down there and get them tacos? Oh, the tacos are the, tacos are the best. The, the, the molitas, the asada, and the bada and everything. You can get that in San Diego now. You can get tacos del gordo right there. Good stuff. Tacos del Paisa, Tacos del Gordo, you know, so you can get TJ Tacos in America, so you don't got to go down there and do all that stuff, and uh, I mean, I was down there in TJ when the Pepos were rolling around, like I was telling you, when they, when the Mexican soldiers came from Mexico City and took the guns away from the police and gave them slingshots, that's how bad it was, because they knew that the police were doing a lot of killings for the cartel, man, and, um, it just ain't the same no more. And I'm sure there's safe times and safe places and everything. But the frontera is the wild, wild west. And um, my spouse just wouldn't get that through her skull. And even when the village, her family, she goes to Mexicali, which is part of the frontera. There was a New Year's that she wanted to go. The family was trying to pressure her. Her brother, the one that I'm not so fond of, went down there. And my they wanted to take my son down there. And one of the women who lived in the village... Her brother and a bunch of people were murdered in Durango and they were looking for the sister and she was in the village. So the village had to go on lockdown and my son would have had to have been there. And that's why I'm like, no. So that's why I went pretty hard and pretty hectic here in Napa County to keep them, my son from going down there. She just doesn't care. She doesn't think like that. Her brother got put in a coma. And my son would have been in the car. So there's just been issue after issue after issue and she just don't get it. There are people that I don't like, people I don't get along with, and it it resonates off of those mergers of people that I knew, um, and the people that I didn't know, but just the actions of other people that led to the taking of other people's lives, it's just like, man, it's just a chapter in my life to let go of. Lake Tahoe sounds good, Hawaii, Yellowstone, there's so much else to see besides just going down to Puerto Nuevo and having lobster, or going down to Tijuana and having some tacos. I'm good. I'm good. But it, it's caused a major uh, issue here, and it really, it uh, mushroomed, I guess you could say, here in Napa County, in the court, and um, yeah, we'll get more with it. I'm going to let y'all go for right now. I got some videos that I want to make tomorrow. I'll be checking back in with you. I got some interesting stuff to read to you guys. I want to keep putting forth that evidence. And then I'll hit you with some of these other things as we go along. Have a good night.